pleasure to be here. It's amazing to be even nominated and make it so far. So thank you for giving me this opportunity and congratulate you to all your, the other teams. Uh, amazing grow, uh, work and uh, well, let's start. For me, thank you for allowing me to present you Gaia. Gaia is a project that is really close to my heart because it's located in my country, Ecuador. It has been believed to be a symbol of progress and a symbol of inspire, inspiration. To start, I wanted to introduce other, our team, design team, um, Uribe Schwarzkopf, which are the co-designers and developers of this project. They are the visionaries of Gaia and that who allowed us to um, try new things. And the other side, um, us, Lepanen Anchor, I'm the anchor part of the Lepanen, um, is a small design firm uh, based recently in Ecuador for the last five years. And we are interested in materiality and technology and form. Where is located Gaia? Gaia is located in Quito. Um, it's a city that has been changing a lot in the, in the last couple decades because there's a more um, efficient uh, credit for the banks and uh, um, also the independence for different families to be in their own homes. And um, there's existence of the middle class. Quito is located in Ecuador in South America in really high altitude in that magnificent weather. Um, the new conditions of Ecuador um, were located in the valley of uh, the Andean mountains, but with those um, conditions as limitations of the size. We're only 30 kilometers long and eight kilometers width. There's a lot of time so change in, in, in Quito. There's the need of creating a better quality of life for the citizens, and that's why the government has created a couple important moves. They moved the airport from the center of the city to the outskirts, and they create, they're building the new metro station that connects, has become the main air artery to connect the north and south of the city. This has created a change of ordinances in the city, creating new, and by doing that, it has created new densifications. Gaia has become a pioneer for these new densifications. Um, it has changed the skyline of the, of the city, and it has been located in an absolute unique um, center of the city with an absolute um, unique location. And it's, it's located in the center north. The surroundings. I think this is really important for us because this was the inspiration for the form of Gaia. We felt that the main source of our inspiration was the location, with including the dynamic and the contextual energies into our building. The site is the heart of the city. The new metro station, um, the main uh, public park, the, um, the biggest mall on the city, right across of a um, business um, platform, right across an environmental um, ministry, and also in the main artery that connects to the suburbia part of the city and to the connects also the residents with the economic um, developments. Also, Gaia is the first mixed-use building in Ecuador. So the vision of Uribe Schwarzko was to create this new hub of development where people are starting to get a little fed up with the commute, like anywhere else, and to have a building that will not have dead spaces and dead zones. So we decide to start our design concept. Our design concept starts with an iterative process. We start with a volume, and we start adding different values from the context. In this case, we put restrictions, needs, contextual influences, and start sculpturing. Then we start taking um, particular uh, corners to do double and triple height spaces that will connect directly back to the city, where those spaces are typically dead, typically dead zones. Then we start softening the, the form to create out the language that we wanted to do and give balconies and unique spaces to every single unit of the building. 
here's the, the shapes of the floor plates. Um, we repeated the, the floor plates for efficiencies and construction. And we took into consideration um, the passive sustainable principles that we can apply. I, as I mentioned, there's a privileged uh, weather in Quito. Uh, we're pretty much full all year long. That's why I convinced my partner to move there. <laughs> and because of this passive, um, there's no heating and, and there's no cooling. We took, still took into consideration the rotation of the building and the um, extensive cantilever, cantilevers to create, um, uh, to protect the heat gain. So Gaia is a mixed use building. Uh, we have the first floors uh, in the entry level um, with a plaza. The next five stories are commercial spaces. Then the rest is office spaces. And at the end, we have a um, terrace roof. There is a communal space. What we try to do in this building in the mixed use um, program is to create unique spaces within the program. We wanted to integrate the facade into the building, into the, into the units, into the offices create a plaza in the first floor that in, it got, uh, invites pedestrian people, in, especially because of the program that is surrounding it. Uh, we also wanted to reflect about where it's located. The building has a direct relationship with the Andes, so how we frame the building with the mountains and the mountains to the building. And then the, the green terrace, the green terrace to be a panora panoramic view for the surroundings to co connect the Andes Mountains also to the park and how that communication is start doing in a communal, sp communal space. The offices, creating an open plan offices to increase the idea of work home offices. So the people that actually live in that area will also work. So there's less uh, dead zones in the, in the space. And then we have independence entrances for the residence parts and also the offices parts, that they feel independent but still share spaces. And in their spaces, we try to um, advocate for the hotel-like experience and use, have theaters for in the evening night for movies but in the, in the afternoons for conferences. And using the spa and elements like this that it will be targeted for younger, younger um, clients. This is a typical floor plan. Um, the floor plans are typically small, 60 to 90 square meters. So the people that are targeted in this building are young family or young professionals. And again, um, kind of open space for the offices. The facades, a little bit of how we involve the environment, the surrounding areas to our facade sections to integrate how transportation will influence our construction and the, t and, the ter and the open plaza in the first floor. Parametric model. I understand that a live model is frequently used here in the United States, but this is the first time we actually did it in Ecuador. Uh, typically people, we communicate with AutoCAD drawings and hand drawings, but by having um, a live model and make the communication that more precise and more vivid. Um, the visual uh, representation was more efficient. And also it became um, a very important tool to make our malls, our MDF malls, and to um, adjust it by when, when construction was being done. The construction type in Ecuador um, is really specific. Typically, is concrete um, fill, um, concrete block infill, with cladding of stucco and fake uh, stone and brick. Recently, they're using a lot of aluco bond, um, eh, but for us and for, so this is what is existing right now. So for us to be, um, eh, when. For us to not sacrifice our design, we needed to find a new material that we can present it to the, the, to the builder. Um, so we needed a material that was moldable, that we can do curves, that we can do seams, that we can uh, mold it, curve it. And because of our experience before in the United States and with this material, that's why we brought it up uh, GFRC. 
product. We understood that this product will allow us to do what we wanted to do in design, but it also um, meant that we need to innovate it in the, con in the construction, and that became a pretty big challenge. So we started presenting different analyses in our building and, and understanding the molds that we needed to fabricate. So we started to create um, a diagrams of how many molds we need to fabric clad the entire building. Each mold was about four meters long by uh, two meters high. And um, we, we started to create relationship between the two. This is the pretty simple mold making system that we did. And this is the installation process. With the installation process, it, was, it worked like a, literally like a puzzle. It was installed with a crane. And we did a secondary structure that we can tie it up to the slabs of the building. And by doing that, we also had um, the ability of align the, align the different pieces and, become, and make it become seamless. We created details, especially drip edge details, joints, and especially the, 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 um, the transitional details between the GFRC to handrail and the GFRC to drywall. These are all the benefits that we understood uh, and, and presented as GFRC, mostly about the efficiency that we were able to put it together. This is Gaia. I think uh, we were really interested in the in its form, in its volume. We use existing elements and new elements to create new lines, to cre create new shadows and new reflections. The success of this building was to advance, push architecture within the context of Ecuador. To tell you the truth, that the fact that we built it is a, an amazing success. <laughs> In reality, we were successful because we were able to push all the providers, engineers, materials, and the creation of details that had not been seen before or attempted. And not only we did it, but we did it with a really high execution. Everybody got tested, and the testing will allow future buildings to take additional challenges. We gave the, the, the we gave people the capacity to be successful, for successful and to be proud of it. I, I think now we understand the risk of taking a risk and the importance of taking one. It is a tool for progress and development. Above all, to be able to give back to Ecuador and the possibility to be here in an international um, conference exposing our building Gaia. Thank you very much. Um, Tommy wasn't able because of health reasons to come with me, so I'm going to present a little bit of his point of view about Gaia. We are reaping the fruit of many years of daily work, where with vision we have undertaken world-class projects that today makes us stand out at an international level. At Gaia, we created an infrastructure that took shape from a joint design work between Uribe Schwarzkopf and Anchor Lebanon, adding value and innovation in the design of each space with a special focus, focus on interior design. Always driven by our philosophy of generating strategic alliances with the best architects and designers around the world, and firmly believing in the quality and constant innovation. We are confident our signature will leave a footprint that it will endure in time and space. As we are convinced now, more than ever, that Quito is already part of the heights of the world. Great architects such as Jean Nobel, Philip Stark, Marcel Wonder, Jarg Ingels, Moshe Sabdi are now part of our international network of designers and architects. And together we are creating great projects that are undoubtedly transforming our capital profile. In each project, we are fully involved from its beginning, engaging a great team of professionals who work in development, financing, and sale, engaging in every stage of the development without leaving loose ends. We have been building in Quito for 45 years, 
building dreams of height, generating challenges, and promoting a new integral vision and proposition of architecture. Today, we're proud to have built and developed the city of Quito at the height of the world. Gaia is one of the examples of a job well done. The building is a result of an association with great architectural professionals, which have already been internationally recognized by receiving the CTBUH 2018 award. This recognition fills us with pride and commits us even more with our country to continue advancing towards the future by giving firm steps today.